Good morning. I'm a regulator. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> but I felt terribly flattered by both Michelle and Martha when they said that it's so important that regulators are here in the room and at the table. Well, it's true, you say, but let me come from my end. Should we be here? What is our role? The role of the regulator is to protect public health. And if you think this through in a quiet moment, you will immediately come to the conclusion that that gives us two roles that are distinct. One is to be a gatekeeper, and the other is to be an enabler. We want, and this is in our mission statement, that beneficial drugs are available for patients in a timely manner. So, yes, we want to support the drug development endeavor. Now, given our privileged position, we have a front row seat to see the drug development endeavor fail because it is so complex. And we understand that the tasks of getting a new concept, a new target to the patient is probably beyond the means of any individual player, whether you're in academia or whether you're in, in a private sector. So we fully support this idea of the public-private partnership. We like to believe this is the way forward. And we need to engage. Now, how do we engage? What are the channels of communication? We have long established channels of communications, but these were based on the gatekeeper roles. Now, this is more a ritual dance. There are templates, timelines, clearly defined communication lines, etc. Now, if you have ever watched a Baroque ritual dance, you know that it lacks somehow spontaneity. So those established channels of communications are good for the gatekeeper, but they're not very good to further to support creative thinking. We understood that, so therefore we have established different levels of communications. And I would say we now have three different levels. We have the ritual Baroque dance. We have what my children do when they go to a disco, no rules at all. We call that the safe harbor. That is really where you can toss up ideas. You bring people into a room and say, what do you think of that? There are no constraints, no penalties, no commitments. And we have a level in between that is the, basically the scientific advice. And we have established a procedure, and my colleague Maria Zayag will talk about more, more to this, um, where companies or whoever partnerships can come and say, what do you think of this development plan for this biomarker, for this PRO, etc.? So that's semi-formal. And then we move on to the very formal, again, the Baroque ritual dance. So I, we like to believe that the channels of communication are there. Are they being utilized? Well, that depends on who you have in mind. I think Big Pharma understands that they utilize that. It's a routine, as Richard has said. When it comes to small pharma, academic units, etc., the record is far more mixed. There seems to be a high threshold for them to come in, or are we too scary? I don't know. But there is room for improvement. I think with other regulators, and I'm looking particularly at FDA, I think that works quite well. Again, that has been choreographed over at least a decade. With learned societies and payers, we're starting to do that. We are aware that there are people out there who will then make decisions about paying for the drugs, and then there are people out there who will write clinical guidelines, and they're all decision makers. Are we interacting with those, particularly when it comes to development of new methodologies? Will, be, will they be accepted by those constituencies? And I think we're starting that dialogue. There is one group that is amiss, and we've just been discussing about them. I like to believe that the input of patients into the process is still in its infancy. Yes, we have made great strides. Yes, we have a working party at the EMA for patients, uh, groups, etc. But let's be honest. Patients are effectively excluded from the licensing decision, and patients are largely excluded still from the design of a study, and they are largely excluded from the development of new methodologies. Um, I find it a great idea that IMI has uh, set up the UPATI network. We would hope that we can engage with those. 
And I think we will have to discuss how we can bring patients into that process. Now, two final thoughts. One is about, I spoke about informality. Now, informality is not to be confused with a lack of openness. And I'm saying this because many of you will know that my organization is in the midst of a big and heated debate on openness, transparency, sharing of data. So I saw with a bit of uneasiness, sorry, Martha, to dis I usually agree with everything you say, <laughs> but there is one point, and you had a slide that says respect for confidentiality. Well, of course, but at the same time you say data sharing. So can you have the cake and eat it? I'm not so sure. So this is something we have to look at. And our rules of the game are perhaps slightly different when I hear about IP protection and all that. For a regulator, that is a whole different poll game again. And the last thought is, and Michelle asked me to address that point, how do you measure the success of such a multi-million or billion public-private partnership? There is a lot of money thrown at it. What will come out? Well, I'm sure there are a lot of different metrics and people, different people will have different ideas, but from where I stand, I could offer one metric. Let's go back. What is the purpose of, for example, IMI, and I presume CPATH as well to a degree, to develop in a pre-competitive space, to develop tools for drug developments. Now, many of these tools will have to have regulatory acceptance. So if any of these PPPs develop a PRO, a patient reported outcome, and the regulators say, no, this is not good enough, that's not fit for purpose, there's a lack of success. But if that PRO or that predictive biomarker, whatever the case may be, becomes an accepted tool for drug development and hopefully shortens development timelines, etc., I will call that a success, and I propose that to be at least one major metric of measuring it. Thank you.